dear colleagues, uh, natural uh, river damming is one of the most hazardous natural phenomena in mountainous regions. Identification and study of past barriers in formerly, formerly glaciated mountainous valleys and correct understanding of their origin is an important stage of the landslide and seismic hazard assessment. Study of any of the prehistoric blockages raises two main questions. First, is this dam had been created by landslide or by end moraine? And the second one, if it is a landslide dam, what was a trigger? An earthquake or any climatic phenomena or something else? Uh, correctness of our answers predetermines not only further research activities, but also at a large extent the disaster mitigation strategy. So, let's discuss the first problem, landslide versus moraine origin of, land, of uh, natural blockages. This problem was discussed in detail for the Karakoram region, where a rock slide nature of numerous <coughs> past river damming barriers was proved by Kenneth Hewitt in his excellent publications. Similar consideration has been drawn by the, uh, Dr. Bath in 2013 for the large blockade at the Cascade River in the southern island of New, uh, New Zealand and by uh, Italian and, uh, by the, sorry, by international team uh, for the, in 2009 for large rock slide dam in the uh, Cerro Aconcagua in Argentina. However, recently, this issue was raised in the opposite way for the Pamirs and Southern Tian Shan in publication of uh, Nikolai Ishuk from Tajikistan, who considers most of blockages, including well-known Yashulkul Shiva and Iskanderkul lakes, lake dams, and the breached Kudarad <coughs> dam as being formed by end moraines. Here is the region in question. It is its position. And uh, more locally, the site and the sites which will be shown and discussed briefly hereafter. His main argument in for favor of glacial origin of the natural dams is the presence of large amount of moraine material in their bo bodies. Such assumption, however, from my point of view, ignores morphology of the study features as well as some general pattern of glaciation phenomena. What morphologies are typical of the blockages in question. First, all of them are located at the feet of spoon-shaped lowerings in the adjacent slope. Here is the well-known Shiva Lake in Afghanistan, in Afghan Badakhshan, close to Tajik Pamir border. And we can see that there is uh, a good example of the um, spoon shape lowering just above this dam. This, uh, here we can see it. Another example, um, the Yashilkul Lake in Pami central Pamirs. We also have this uh, distinct headscarf and bouldery material uh, angular boulders, several meters in size each, at the foot of it. We will come back to this uh, case study a little bit later. Another good example, the Kudara Bridge Dam in Pamirs. Here we have this distinct headscarf and, def sorry, and we have 
some remnant of glacial uh, valley here. But if we will look closer on the body, indeed, some of these units are composed of glacial material, of mat uh, moraine material, but the position of these stripes of material at the foot of the headscarf distinctly indicate that it is just this scarf which was the source of this material, not neither the main valley nor the tributary valley if uh, there was any glacial in them, in the, there could uh, form such deposits. It came just from here. Another example. It is another large headscarf, likely this one or maybe even bigger one, which formed the dam. Moreover, upstream from this valley in this direction, there is another headscarf that formed the body that dammed two valleys and formed lakes which were later on partially bridged, partially filled by deposits. So practically all of these headscarves are much lower than the level of recent glaciation and most of them are really unique recent features within entire valley slope. Glaciation actually is a climate driven process that depends at a large extent on slope height, on uh, slope level actually, on elevation, and on slope aspect. Thus, if niche glacier or nivation hollow exists at a slope at one side, something similar should be found at some other side nearby. And absence of such features indicate that it could not be a glacial phenomenon. And uniqueness of the features described above makes their glacial origin unrealistic, while it is quite typical of the landslide headscarves. Now let's discuss presence of large amount of moraine material in the dam's bodies. Indeed, large parts of valley slopes, their lower parts, especially in Pamirs and in southern Tian Shan, have really, the, uh, the valleys were glaciated uh, in the past, are covered, somehow pasted, by moraine material that had been left by past glaciers. And when large-scale slope failure occur, the bedrock debris just is bulldozered in front of uh, uh, the, uh, yes, bulldozers this moraine material in front of it and uh, sometimes overruns and overlays it. Let's look on the example. It is the Imom landslide in Pamirs. Distinct head scarf. The frontal part is composed of moraine material while most of the internal part, it is pure rock slide debris. Another case study, also in Pamirs. And again, we have a distinct headscarp, moraine material in front and rock slide debris behind it that pushed it. The most interesting case, maybe, is the Yashalkul rock slide. Here, we have the headscarp, the angular gneiss boulders that form this well-defined rock avalanche body, but in front of it, here and here, and the side, we have moranic material, and around the boulders we send the silt uh, matrix. But let's look here. We have this rock avalanche material. We have 
original surface here composed of moraine, old moraine material and we have interesting stripe of moraine material which in fact is a part of rock avalanche body. It was uh, bulldozed and pressed out from, the, from under these uh, angular clusts and formed this stripe. Thus, presence of marine material in the river damming barriers does not exclude their rock slide origin. Combination of blockages and headscarves just above them proves that most of large natural barriers in the Pamir's, Pamir River valleys, both existing and breached, have been formed by rock slides, not by end moraines. But if the opposite point of view is correct, what it means if these blockages were formed by end uh, moraines? It means that no hazard of large river blocking should be anticipated in the near future due to present day climatic situation in the region. Besides, these blockages would have no relationships to the seismicity. Thus, related risks would be quite low. However, if the alternative, the rock slide origin, is, is correct, it means that no general restriction of river damming at any time in future exists and related risks must be considered as relatively high. It raises another question. What was the trigger of such past rock slides? Earthquake as for the 1911 Usoi Dam. Here we can see its head scarp or something else. Distinct discrimination of seismically triggered prehistoric river damming landslides from those triggered by other processes is a difficult task and it, we can ask a question, is it possible at all? Indeed, if we take Alps, uh, more, which is not very seismically active region at present, most of publications describing rock slides, rock avalanches, deep-seated gravitational slope deformations in these regions are related in publications to deglaciation, the buttressing, permafrost degradation and other phenomena. But if we read papers about similar features in the Tianshan, Pamirs, Sichuan, uh, or uh, Southern Alps or Zagros, which are much more seismically active at present, most of them in publications are related to past earthquakes. If we will look in the well-known book of uh, History of Persian Earthquakes, the first earthquake which is included there is Saimare, but it is not a holy Bible. There is no indication in that Saimare was triggered by rock slide. It is just assumed. And I'm sure that such assumptions requires special justification, not at a regional scale, but in each particular case. So, what can be used as most justified discrimination criteria? Size of event, run out of event. So let's look at some examples. Size, volume. It is the headscarf of seismically triggered Usoi landslide, 2.2 billion cubic meters in volume. And it is the aseismic 1974 Mayumarka landslide, about one cubic kilometer in volume, the same order of size. Mobility, it is the seismically triggered 1970 Huascaran rock avalanche, photo provided by Steve Evans. And it is 2,000 Yigong uh, rocks avalanche, 
10 kilometers long run out, a seismic event. Another example, Haid earthquake, also photo provided by Steve Evans. It buried several thousand people in the Haid town, a seismically triggered event. And it is very similar, frank, a seismically triggered. So, size cannot work, run out cannot work. And it can be explained by the comparison of the potential energy of the collapsed massive and the kinetic energy that could be supplied to this massive by seismic shaking. Let's look on this plot. These lower lines are kinetic energy that can be supplied to, the, uh, to such volume of material with the peak velocity of about one meter per second, which is typical for large earthquakes, and by spectral velocity of three meters per second, which is also typical. And it is the potential energy of the same amount of material with drop height, height drop of 10, 100, 500, and 1,000 meters. And we can see that the potential energy is several orders larger. Thus, run out and shape which are of uh, rock slide deposits, which are governed by the energy, uh, practically totally depend on the potential energy. Thus, it explains why neither size nor run out nor shape of the deposits can be used to discriminate seismically and aseismically triggered landslides. Thus, we need some other indicators. The most prominent one is the simultaneity of several large rock slope failures. The simplest case, when several large rock slide bodies conjugate somehow with each other, uh, and we can see if one is younger than another or there are occurred at the same time. Such relationship of the deposits allows unequivocal determination of their simultaneity or non-simultaneity. Here is an example of non-simultaneous slope failures. Let's have a look. It is the uh, Inner Czech River Valley in the eastern Tian Shan. We have two rock avalanches, one from here and that it formed a body which was later on significantly eroded by the river. Another one came from this side. And now let's have a look on this outcrop. It's here. It is the first one. Then some erosion occurred, and we have evidence of this erosion. And this one is the second one. We can say that they occurred one after another with some interval, so they occurred in different time. Another example, so-called Belagorka twins in northern Kyrgyzstan. It is, we have two head scarf, very distinct, one and another, and two bodies, and we see that they are just nearby. If one would be later than another, it would overlay and overlap it. But here it is not the case. So these events occurred at the same time. We cannot say confidently that they occurred due to seismic or a seismic uh, trigger, but anyhow they occurred in the same time. But if large prehistoric rock slides are located at some distance from each other. Only extensive dating could provide additional information that can prove or disprove their simultaneity. Let's have a look. It is the uh, Karakungye rock avalanches in the central Tian Shan. We have two head scarves, two rock avalanche bodies, and both occurred on slopes composed of same Paleozoic granite with similar height, steepness, and aspect. 
Nevertheless, they are separated from each other and there is one more older event and we need a lot of dating of this material to prove or to disprove their time of their origin. And another case, what should we do if past earthquake had triggered only one large scale slope failure? like it had happened in many cases listed here. All of these large earthquakes produced only one large-scale slope failure. The promising uh, indicator of large river damming bedrock landslide seismic origin could be found among the, uh, in the deposi as a deposi depositional features that immediately Pre mm, precede initial sedimentation of the landslide dammed lake. Let's have a look. Such features should be closely timed to the large scale slope failure, even if we cannot date them precisely. It could be exemplified by two case studies from the Kokomaran River Valley in central Tian Shan in Kyrgyzstan. Let's have a look. Kokomaran rock slide, late Pleistocene, about one and a half cubic kilometers in volume. It caved from the high slope, and the main body rests on the terrace, which, which it is important point, was much above the level of the river channel at the time of failure. Here we see the rock slide body overlapping uh, alluvium, terrace alluvium. So, in this case, slope undercutting by river erosion could not occur. Could, it could not be the trigger of landslide. Besides, there is an active fault that stretches towards the head scarp area. And we can see very distinct evidence of recent faulting. Features in questions that uh, occur just before uh, land, uh, lake sedimentation started, could be found upstream, about five kilometers from the site. Here is an, one more active fold, and here are the, these localities. Here is an outcrop that consists of a lacustrine uh, laminated silt, which which overlay some blocky screen mixed with a, a, a river alluvium. And the latter is a rest over the melanotized rock of the large fault zone. And the whole succession was covered and eroded by a debris flow. The, after that, before that, the whole succession was tilted and ruptured. But it is another story. I will focus on this unit now. What we have here? We have mixture of angular clusts, these just locally rounded by subsequent erosion, and they are somehow mixed with river alluvium, with boulder alluvium. And it could fall only from the opposite slope of the river, rather far from here. And if it would fall in the active stream, it would be soon washed away by the powerful river. But it collapsed just when fl river flow stopped. And that is why it was just a little bit mixed with alluvium. And it could occur just immediately or simultaneously or immediately after the um, main river damming event because otherwise it would be washed away. Besides, there is an interesting unit at the base of lacustrine deposits, this one, basal brescia, overlaid by l laminated lacustrine silt and above we have debris flow deposits. This basal brescia could be found at a rather long distance at the base of 
lake sediments. And water should appear here within less than in five days, I would say. What, how it looks like. Here we have mixture of uh, angular clusters of meta -sediment, black meta sediments that came from the left side of the river and of um, silt matrix, silty matrix with some uh, pieces of sandstone, of neogene sandstone that came from the other side. So there was some mixture. And similar uh, features were found at another case, at another site, in the same river valley. Here we have the head scarf. Uh, it produced a long, long run out rock avalanche that split into two parts and formed two bodies. The upper one formed the dam about 70 meters high. And about eight kilometers upstream from here, we could find evidence of a liquefaction, seismically induced liquefaction. Here it is this uh, small outcrop. We have laminated lacustrine silt, not disturbed. And the lower unit where liquefaction occurred, where basal sand was um, somehow mixed with bas uh, basal units of this lacustrine silt. How it looks like. This liquefied unit, sand that was ejected, and we have non-liquefied, liquefied unit, and a liquefied, ejected liquefied sand formed the so-called event horizon. And we can draw some successions here in Cocomeren and in the second lower Aral rock slide cases. When defining events that occurred uh, after some times, because, for example, rock falls occurred immediately, simultaneously or immediately after the main river damming event in Cocomeren case, while basal unit deposition started maybe a few days after when water, rising water, came to that side. And here we have this basal unit deposition. These are indicative features that could tell us something about seismic origin of these rock slide dams. And I think that if we will study similar cases in other parts of the world or in other parts of this region, and we could find similar phenomena, we could learn more and we maybe could get an, an additional tool to discriminate seismically and a seismically triggered landslide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. That's all.